Hey guys, you may wonder why I've got this little rubber duck sitting next to me, which some of you may actually recognize from my morphing tutorial. But don't panic, I'm not going to talk about birds in this tutorial. Instead, I'm going to show you how to make things glow. As you can see, adding a glow effect to static elements in your scene is actually really, really easy. Whoa, 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 too much, too much, too much. Tone it down, tone it down, tone it down. Okay, that's better. And with just a little bit of extra effort, you can also make moving objects glow. This is going to be a fairly simple tutorial, but I will assume that you watched at least a few of my basic tutorials and you know how to use masks and apply effects to layers, but even if you don't, don't stress too much, you'll probably be fine. But enough talking, let's jump right into the tutorial. Now this footage should seem familiar. That's not surprising because it is the clip from the intro of this video. Let me first show you the simple case and make a static element glow. In this tutorial, we will use the rubber duck for that. In order to make any element glow, you first have to separate it from the footage. To do this, select your footage layer and go to Edit, Duplicate. Alternatively, you can also press Ctrl D on your keyboard. Let's rename the layer to Glowing Duck. Ensure that the Glowing Duck layer is selected and zoom in on the rubber duck or on whatever element you have in your scene that you want to add a glow effect to. Then select the pen tool from the toolbar and draw a mask around the rubber duck. Easy. If you now solo out the glowing duck layer, you should only see the rubber duck that we masked out. Now go over to your effects and presets panel on the right side and search for the glow effect. Apply it to the glowing duck layer either by double clicking it or by dragging and dropping it onto the layer. Bam! You can already see the glow effect applied to our rubber duck. Now let's tweak some of the parameters. First off, you can choose whether you want to base the glow on the alpha or the color channel of the layer. If you choose alpha channel, then the glow will appear around the edges of your object only. We will keep the setting on color channel to make the actual contents of our layer, the rubbery body of the duck, glow. The glow threshold determines which parts of your layer will actively glow. A high glow threshold means that only the very bright parts of your layer will glow. A low glow threshold will also make the darker parts of your layer glow. Let's set it to something around 80% to only make the brighter parts of the duck glow. The glow radius obviously changes the radius of your glow effect. Note that the intensity of the glow decreases as we jack up the radius. Let's set it back to around 40 for now. In order to increase the intensity of the glow, you can change, surprise, surprise, the glow intensity property of the effect. Obviously, the higher this property, the more intense the glow effect will be. Now, there is one problem that you are likely going to run into. Let's increase the radius to something pretty big. Now, this will make the glow almost invisible. Zoom out and bring up the intensity to a very large value. You may notice that even though our glow intensity is up past 60, we still cannot see any of the glow effect. This is actually caused by a composition setting. Hop over to the project window and at the bottom of this window you will see the color depth setting for your current composition. It is currently set to 8 bit per channel which is simply not enough to properly show the large gradient of our glow effect. Alt click on this number twice to change it to a full 32 bit per channel. And voila, there's our huge and massively intense rubber duck glow. Let's make this look a little bit more natural. Go back to the effects control settings for the glow effect and let's bring down the intensity. We want to get a really nice orangey yellow glow sphere around the duck. Actually, let me quickly show you how you can determine whether the glow sits on top or behind of the layer you're applying it to. You can change the composite original property to on top to move the glow behind the elements in your layer. But since this looks a little bit out of place, let's set it back to behind. Let's zoom out and adjust the glow so that our duck is visible again. For this, I'm simply going to bring down the glow intensity to around 25-ish. To see what the final effect with the glowing rubber duck will look like, unsolder the glowing duck layer. Bam! And we have a glowing duck in our scene. That was pretty easy. Feel free to play around with the glow parameters until you achieve the effect that you are after. Now for the second part of this tutorial, let me show you how you can make moving objects glow. For this, I'm going to the time position where I'm moving my hands closer to the rubber duck. We will add a nice blue glow to my moving hands. 
For now, let's disable the visibility on the glowing duck layer. Just like before, we do need to separate my moving hands from the footage layer so we can apply a glow effect to them separately. So once again, duplicate your footage by selecting it and going to Edit, Duplicate. I will call this layer Glowing Hands. Now you can use the pen tool to draw a mask around your moving elements and animate the mask path property to follow the objects frame by frame. But since this can be very tedious when working with something like human hands, instead I'm going to use the Roto Brush tool. The Roto Brush tool is available in After Effects CS5 and later. To use the Roto Brush tool, select it from the toolbar and then double click the glowing hands layer to bring up the Roto Brush editor. Let me quickly enlarge the preview window so it's a little bit easier to see what I'm doing. One very important setting to always, always check when working with the Roto Brush tool is to make sure that you are applying the brush in full resolution. For this, go to View, Resolution and ensure it is set to full. Now zoom in on the elements you want to rotoscope, in my case that is my hands, and start painting over them. This will apply the roto brush effect to my hands and you will see a purple outline. This purple outline defines which areas will be cut out from the footage by the roto brush tool. Keep painting until all fingers are properly rotoscoped and you can see the purple outline around them. In order to remove areas that have been selected by the roto brush tool, you can paint with the eraser mode by simply holding down the alt key. Once that's done, move forward one frame and repeat the process if required. The Roto Brush tool will do its best to follow the elements you are working on, but it usually requires a fair bit of manual intervention and guidance. I'm going to fast forward through this process as it simply takes some time to ensure that everything is rotoscoped properly for the time of the animation. Once you're done applying the Roto Brush, return to your composition by selecting the Composition tab at the top of the preview window. Now if you place the timeline indicator over one of the frames that you rotoscoped, you will see that After Effects starts processing a little bit while it applies the Roto Brush effect and cuts out the elements you painted. To see the result of the Roto Brush tool, solo out the glowing hands layer. You can see we have the hands very nicely separated from the base footage. Let's trim down the layer to only encompass the few seconds that we've actually rotoscoped. Nice! Now it's time to give them a healthy blue glow. Let's zoom in on the hands. One thing you might notice with the Roto Brush tool is that it can give you fairly hard edges around the objects you are cutting out. If your object is moving around a lot, you can make this look a whole lot better simply by enabling the Use Motion Blur switch in your Roto Brush effect. Better already! Now apply the glow effect from your Effects and Presets panel to the hands. By default, the color of the hands will define the color of the glow. We can, just like before, tweak this effect as we please by changing the glow effect parameters. In order to change the color of the glow to a natural blue, go to the glow colors parameter and set it to A and B colors. Then click on the color A property and choose a bright blue. Yep, I like this color, let's go with that one. Then go over to the color B property and choose another blue. Pick a darker blue as this will be the outside color of the glow. Nice! Let's make the blue glow a bit stronger by increasing the glow intensity to something around 3. In order to have the glow appear on more areas on the hands, lower the glow threshold so that some of the darker areas on the hands will emit the calming blue. Cool, that looks quite nice. Let's zoom out, return to the beginning of the rotoscoped hands layer and unsolo the layer. Let's have a quick look at what we've got so far. Looks pretty good I'd say. Now one thing I want to do is to actually fade in and fade out the blue glowing hands layer so it appears to be more of an energy on energy off effect. And don't worry, this is really simple. Reveal the opacity property on the glowing hands layer by selecting it and pressing T on your keyboard. Create a keyframe just when your glowing hands layer starts by clicking on the stopwatch icon next to the opacity property. Then bring the opacity all the way down to zero. Move forward a few frames and increase the opacity to 100% to animate the layer so it fades in. Then move forward to the end of the effect and set another keyframe at 100%. Do this by clicking on the little diamond to the left of the stopwatch icon for the opacity property. Move forward a few more frames and set the opacity back down to zero to fade the glowing hands layer out. All that's left to do is move back a little bit and play back your final glowing hands effect. And that's all there is to it. Now, that really wasn't that hard, was it? I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, please leave any comments, questions or suggestions in the section below. 
If you would like to show some support, please subscribe, hit that like button, share the video around. It really helps out a lot. And as always, you can also find and follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Until next time, I will see you later. What the...